Sarge car. Bottom of the channel, Sarge. Vince tried to drown me. Find a replacement. Adam in here, Captain. Oh, hey there, gentlemen. Hello there. Jim, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the Talking Ball Club, and today we're going over the Ohio Ordnance H car, the heavy counter assault rifle. Now, this is a really big deal to me, gentlemen. This is a big deal for myself, for my existence, because the H car is one of my dream guns. But the question is, is the H car king or is it cringe? Today we're gonna to find out. Now before I can talk about this gun, gentlemen, I have to address an elephant in the room. YouTube has been a dubious little creature lately. And for the sake of my channel and for the sake of YouTube guidelines, none of the magazines you see in this video are 30 rounders. They are all under 30 rounds. They are 29 rounds or less, all right? So keep that in mind. Now, okay, with that out of the way, Let's finally get into this bad boy. Now, I know you're on the toilet, you're washing this, drinking your coffee, eating your beer, doing something maybe you shouldn't be doing, like time thefting from your overlords. Whether that may be, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. I love reading your comments. Big Tech does not like what we do here. That is a daily reminder of my existence. So, if you want to support the channel, the least amount of effort, your user interaction is greatly appreciated. All right, let's go back to the H car. Now, it's important to get a little bit of a full disclosure of how I acquired an H car because the backstory is actually really important. So how I got this H car, essentially there is a sponsor of the channel called Americana Pipe Dream Apparel, which is gonna be the sponsor of this video. They supplied me with this Omani smock. They hooked up with Hub City Outdoors and got this Omani DPM chest rig made for me. And they managed to secure me a H car. Now I bought the H car with the money supplied from them. So that was part of the deal. They were like, hey, we wanna sponsor a video. And I said, what if Instead of sponsoring a video, you supplied me with an H car. So we did a little working out and made sure everything was legally. So I got the funds from them and I bought it and we went through an FFL and everything's totally legal like that. So I bought this directly from Ohio Ordnance, which is actually very important for this video. And you'll find out why. Now, part of Americana Pipe Dream securing me this gun or helping me get this gun essentially is they got to name it. So they got to name it the AP Administrator, which I think is a fitting name and I love them very much. So big thank you to Americana Pipe Dream Apparel. Thanks for sponsoring this video and being a supporter of the channel. Love those guys very much. They're some fun high-speed zoomer and they do a bunch of military surplus. So yet again, big thank you to those guys. Now, if you're completely unfamiliar of what this gun is, this is a 30-06 battle rifle or it's a heavy counter assault rifle. I don't know what heavy counter assault rifle even means. Uh, they just, did, I don't know why they didn't call it BAR 2.0 because essentially this is a modernized BAR. Now, you're probably saying, hey, admin, uh, your older brother Grantham literally just did a video on this not too long ago, which is just very true. I even consulted him on my video and he did an excellent job of going over the gun, his round count, and a lot of the fine-tuned details of this firearm. So we don't have to go too heavy into detail. I'll cover some quick things with my setup and personally what I did. It's very special to me because like I was saying earlier, this is one of my dream guns and I was really excited to get it on the channel. So you can take and gleam information from Garantham's channel. I'll link his ch video up here. It should be over here, over here. Where's it at, Savio? Where do I link the videos at? Wherever you want it to be. Ah. A good answer. Now, you can watch his experience with the H car, and I highly recommend you do. But I had my own personal experience with the H car, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm kind of gonna bully the H car in this video because there are some things about this gun that I think are really stupid, but there are also some things about this gun that I do love. <sighs> Definitely, we're in business on the side of the hall. <sighs> So we have to answer the question, is this gun king or is it cringe? And what kind of role does this fill? How much does this thing cost? Is it even worth it when you find out the price point that they're going for now? So there's a lot of things up in the air that we have to talk about. So let's start out with the pros, right? So one thing I do love about this gun is first and foremost, of course, it's aesthetics. Everybody, wow, wow. aesthetics. The gun looks awesome. It has a very rugged and robust design. A lot of guys in my comments whenever I post this on Instagram are always saying, hey, that looks like the gun from 40K from Warhammer. Um, I, I respect the lore, but I'm a noob when it comes to it. And the gun is, to my eye, pleasing. I got the gun originally in FDE, but I decided to rattle can it because if you're afraid to rattle can your guns, then you're just scared. And you're gonna see that rattle canning bit in this video, of course. But 
the gun to me of, is just so beautiful. It is a beautiful designed firearm. Uh, is it the most practically designed firearm? No. Is it the most beautiful? It's definitely up there in my book. This is now probably one of the most expensive pieces in my collection as well, because right now, and this is a big thing that I don't like, is how much it costs. By no means am I telling you to go out and buy this gun in any way, shape, or form. I'm just showing off this firearm because I love showing off firearms on the channel. A little bit of a show and tell. But I purchased the gun for $5,000 plus taxes and some change. And then I had to buy the BAR mags, and that was even more money. And it's a very much a money pit. But a thing that I really did not like and I thought was kind of... <sighs> pretty much when Grantham released his H-Car video, they upped the price to around sixty-four to seven thousand dollars. I took a screenshot where you can see how much it costs. I don't know what they were doing there, if I'm being honest. I, I think it's kind of like one of those moves of maybe they're trying to capitalize on it, and or they maybe were trying to stop the flow of round of orders coming in. Is my guess. I I don't know. I didn't ask them. I'm all I'm just speculating right now. So I don't know why they did that. I have my hypothesis. I maybe they want to if they want to step in, reach out and tell me why they did that. But if you keep in mind. This gun is very expensive and it's very boutique. It's a very boutique firearm, okay? It's really the modernized BAR, and there is a lot of downsides that go into having a modernized BAR. Of course, the gun is cool. It has a nice big 30-06 round, which is all American. And it has some really cool X factors. Gosh, there is just so much to talk about with this gun. I just, I'm really excited. Now, of course, we have to paint the H car. Americana Pipe Dream Apparel demanded it that I, one, name it after them, or they get to help choose the name, essentially, and two, that I have to paint it. Now, it does have this pretty slick FDE coating on it. Kind of breaks my heart to paint it, but at the same time, if you're afraid to paint your guns, no one will remember your name, so we're gonna, we're gonna freaking do it. But I'm gonna tape off a few things that I think are sensitive, and I just don't wanna risk it, just because this is just, it's expensive, so. <laughs> but we'll do it, so let's do a little quick tape off montage. It's funny to think too, when Savio has to go back to edit this, he literally has to watch paint dry. Don't you just have the worst job, dude? My boss made me watch paint dry on an H car. Emotional. And then we got our BAR mag. Of all the BAR mags I ordered, this one seemed like the sh sh the worst. Sorry, mom. It seems like the worst, so we'll use this guy as our cover for the internals. That should work out just fine. I like to do one final wipe like most things in life. So one thing that bugs the hell out of me about a lot of like, say Rust-Oleum or Krylon cans, I swear to God on the cans, they never actually have, and I've looked and I looked and I don't know if I'm just missing it like an idiot, but I can never find the actual color. So before we start diving in going crazy, I like to mark off what the actual color is, or at least technically I think it is. I know for sure this one's black. <laughs> That's gonna get me canceled. But let's dive on in, let's do this thing. I kinda wanna try a little bit more like a Jungle Pacific paint job. Let's, uh, let's try a little. Like, uh, like the marine frog skin camo, how it's all like kind of dots. I love the gun guys, like have started making gun painting videos and it's such an insult to the audience because you are literally just watching paint dry. All right, then we got the other green, a little darker green. I'm usually a stripe kind of guy when it comes to doing a rattle can job. I love the stripe look, like the black, so I may evolve it, because I don't think it's gonna work with what I'm going with with this kind of paint. You know, that's okay. Sometimes in uh, the paint job game, you have happy little accidents, and you gotta, you gotta evolve on the fly. End of the day, it's your gun. You can paint it how you want, and if you mess up, there's always goo off. I don't think I've ever actually seen someone rattle can their H car. So this could be a first, technically speaking. Admin, aren't you worried about resale value? Do you think I care about resale value? You guys think you're gonna live forever? Own cool stuff and own it. Don't let it own you. You got strangely inspirational. I'll stand by that. Own your stuff, don't let it own you. I think I'm gonna let it sit. I don't wanna overdo it and I'm happy with where she is at. So. I'll I'll try and hold her up for you guys. Muzzle break in stock's pretty safe because you're not gonna like be the first to rub away. 
I hate it. <laughs> That's good. Dude, though it's like winter time, if this was summertime, this thing would already be dry. Oh, oh, oh. So for this next portion, I wanted to get more acquainted with the H car and it's a kit. So I essentially built out a, what I would kind of think of, okay, it's going to be pretty gnarly, but I essentially thought of, okay, like a modern island hopping kit. And that's going to be the belt line kit along with like a chest rig. So the chest rig has got the three mags in there. And then the belt line kit has six BAR mags and then a Glock 17 with all fully loaded mags. And I figured, why don't we do a little ruck? Let's get a little painful. So I want to see what the weight is like with a, a combat load and then a little bit of movement with some weight on the back as well because I want to suffer. I want to suffer for you guys. All right, now just real quick for verification. It is actually a little chilly, but it's going to feel good once I get moving. Everything is loaded up, fully loaded. BAR mags, BAR mags. Everything is loaded up. And in the rucksack, um, I have my sleep systems in there. I have an assault pack, and then I have a 30-pound weight. I'll pull it out and show you guys real quick, just for trust but verify. And then we got the 30-pound dumbbell. <laughs> so get a sick pump before the pump. Uh, we'll throw her on in the ruck. This is kind of encapsulate. Uh, <laughs> I can't talk. This is kind of to encapsulate, 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 encapsulate. Am I retarded? This is kind of encapsulate all of the stuff that I may be missing a part of this kit. Uh, you know, additional ammo, additional water, just everything else along with, like, that goes with the kit. Because I got a bunch of stuff on here. No armor, but we got this bad boy right here to make up for all the pain. But I also got the one liter of water on the back, too. So, overall, the kit itself already as is isn't terrible. It definitely, you do feel the weight, though. Um, thankfully, there is no armor for this part. because so I was like, well, I'm going to be, like, island hopping, modern World War II vibes with a modern BAR. Why not? So we can skip some armor. I'm, I'm nerding out too much. Let's do this thing. If you're wondering, I got this sick jelly bean ruck. I got it from Crossfire. Thanks, Crossfire. It's time to suffer. The dumbbell just absolutely conked me in the back of my head. All right, ruck is on, gear is on, rifle acquired. Let's do a little movement. Thinking we'll try and cruise and bruise. Probably do mile up, mile down and then probably hit this hill real quick. Definitely can feel the weight in my shoulders from the ruck. And then um, the belt line kit with the ruck is not ideal. So I'm about to suffer. Should be a good time though. Whoa, Savio, check it out. I found some ear pro. What? what the heck does this mean? You are over encumbered. This isn't a video game. Of course I can move. Oh! Ah! That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Wait! Wait for me! No! No! Wait! This sucks! I'm sick that day. All right, uh, reach the turnaround point. Gonna turn around now, go figure. Start heading back. Hey, Savio, you there? I am here. I hate you. I love you too. <laughs> All right, fellas, about to be the final stretch of this uh, hike. Now I'm gonna head uphill. See you boys on the other side. At the admin range, we will harness desert power. Desert power. Atreides, with me! You definitely feel it on this last stretch going uphill. Looking pretty steep. Looking like a snack. Good thing I got. I think I got good quads. When I enter the gym, they call me the quad father. They say, they, dang, there goes Admin, the father of quads. So, you know, if I can't use them here, then what's the point of having them? Oh, hey, Savio. How you doing, Savio? Savio never thought to ask, hey, Admin, can I carry any of your stuff? May I lighten the load? This isn't Lord of the Rings, dude. You can carry this. <laughs> All right, 
like an Israelite wandering through the desert, I have found the promised land. And that promised land is the knowledge I was seeking all along. Let me get this monkey off my back. The panic when you can't get the ruck off, dude. Okay, whew. Guys, talk about taking a load off. That big old mug, dude. All right, so why do we do weird stuff like that here at the channel? Well, a big part of it is you get to know yourself and your kit a lot better. I was getting certain takeaways, of course, and one thing about the H car that's a good takeaway is how the charging handle interfaces with kit when you're moving because this thing comes out and it'll tab out like this. So I learned a little bit about the H car, learned about, hey, keeping that charging handle tab locked down to the side so it's not poking you. So small details like that, you get to see where wear is already happening on the rifle. You can just feel how kit that would go when supporting your firearm is gonna feel over a long duration of you being uncomfortable, right? I love learning to get comfy while being uncomfortable. That's a great skill you can learn in life. If you can learn this skill, you'll be just a-okay. I, I do believe in a well-rounded civilian that can do a lot of things because that just means you're a well-rounded citizen. That is something that I think about. It's a little bit more grand scheme of things coming down, but for the sake of this, right, this, I would, if I was gonna redo this, I would take the Beltline kit and probably store it in the ruck itself if I have room, just towards the top and have a chest rig on with just some of the essentials and then maybe have some water rigged up that I could access via the rucksack. Because right now I got the, the liter of water back here here. And I had all this different stuff going on. All right, this is better for like a more assaulting fighting load. This could be just, of course, additional sustainment kit and then very vital stuff that you need, right? So you have, you have, you have ammo on here. And it, honestly, rucking with a chest rig is kind of the meta. Even if I had a plate carrier, I'd still probably ruck with a chest rig on. And then if I was expecting to get shot at or had to go assault an objective. Keep in mind, guys, I'm very out of my element when I talk about this stuff. And I would rather defer to guys that have been there and done it, like my buddy Blue Gene Operator. He's great for learning about that stuff from. But me, I'm just testing out some kit that I think would work now. Keep in mind, reality may check myself very hard. So overall, good little ruck with the H car. Very heavy gun. Let's move on to some more testing. Now I was doing that war gaming thing where I like to do because I'm a big nerd and I was thinking, hey, what if there was a more modernized caliber and maybe this kind of be like a cheaper alternative for the civilian market that can maybe compete with like, uh, say, a Sig Spear, right? Because that Sig Spear is coming out with that, I think the 277 Fury and some other high speed caliber rounds. It's kind of like the next gen of bigger caliber bullets. <laughs> ah. I'm a little sick, guys. Stop laughing. Right. I'm gonna make you just stand there and hold that position forever, dude. Good old Savio. He deserves all the sushi and trin in the world. If you want to see my cameraman fight Micah, which is Grantham's cameraman, and fight Delant, which is Brandon Herrera's cameraman, then go ahead and leave a, a comment in the comment section down below. So I was doing that wargaming aspect thinking, hey, maybe if they made a more modernized 30-06 caliber or more modernized 30-06 bullet, could it compete? But essentially talking to Grantham, he said, hey, that's never going to happen. The 30-06 is just such an old design bullet that kind of giving it a facelift is not going to happen. Now, Grant, I just talked to him. Maybe there's some super advanced science nerds out there that could maybe retrofit the 30-06 to be more modernized, but I don't foresee it happening because why? So, skip! Everything about this gun is like unique and expensive. There's not a lot of spare parts. It's a boutique firearm. The infrastructure and in-house knowledge on this gun is also super limited because there's, there's not, not a lot of these guns out there floating around in the wild. If you were someone like me, I was a beat cop and I got trained on the AR-15 and there is a plethora of institutional knowledge on the AR-15. There's a plethora of institutional um, parts, equipment. There's a whole industry around them. It's one of the most widely available firearms in the country. This is not. This is not that. that this is not the AR-15, right? This is a very expensive firearm, and it's very limited knowledge. And it's just, I, I, it, I had essentially, I'm learning as I go with this gun, which is a really fun, unique experience. But it's also kind of annoying when problems did arise, and problems did arise. So, so I ran into an issue with the H card, notably going to be the trigger hammer area. I'm probably using the wrong words, but essentially, what's happening? So when I pull on the trigger with the safety on, we'll go this side. So I pull on the trigger with the safety on, there's that little bit of a click and nothing happens. But when I release the safety, the gun, the firing pin goes down. So I'll give you a sound equivalent. So here's me pulling the trigger with a firing pin. There it is again, right? Now the weird thing is, I think it might just be some tolerances in the gun. So if I, I, cause I can pull on the trigger, I've been playing this for a little bit. I could pull on the trigger with the safety on and it won't do it. If I hold like the, the safety lever up, 
But if the safety lever goes down ever slightly, it does the firing mechanism. Now, it doesn't just fire if I don't touch the trigger, of course, but that's still for concern. A gun shouldn't be doing that. So what's gonna happen is essentially, I gotta ship it off to Ohio Ordnance to that, for them to kind of fix and look at. I did call them and ask. So apparently they, in their older trigger packs, they had this issue and they fixed it. So I'll give them that. They were pretty expedient to be about fixing it. So that is a good thing. So essentially what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to ship off the trigger mechanism. So I'll pop the pins out ship it off to Ohio Ordnance. Hopefully they do it nice and fast and get that fixed so the review can continue on. So this actually has been more so of a classic firearms review in, in terms of YouTube sins. Instead of the usual videos where I'm showing off a gun, this one's actually like I'm showing off a gun and doing as much with it as I can. So take everything I do and say with a grain of salt, but that is the experience I had with the trigger mechanism. So we'll ship her off and hopefully she gets fixed. I've been enjoying shooting and running the H car for a bit now, but it does have these small weird idiosyncrasies and it's always, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to not go at it alone. It's good to have friends. So I wouldn't bring on a good friend of the channel. Get over here, sir. My, my finished snow camo friend. Why don't you go and uh, reveal yourself? Do a little Should I? unmasking. Should I? Oh. Oh. What? It is kind of hot to uh, have all this on. It is Gun Jesus himself. Oh. Sir, I believe this hat belongs to you. Yes, yes, it does. Thank you. Now, I appreciate you taking the time to come out here and film and um, you know, time out of your day and busy schedule. And I also wanted to say a little bit of an ambush that uh -oh. been a big fan of your work for a long time. So it is a, uh, you know, it's a real honor to have you on. Okay. Well, thank you. I, 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 you, you've been playing the YouTube game much longer than I have. I think, well, you've been doing it for what, 11 plus years? 11 years now. Um, if we go back to when, cause I'm 26, I was still in high school. Oh, running, good lord. <laughs> running around in high school. I'll just uh, make, you, uh, make you feel a little old. I've been old. watching your video since I was in middle school. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you're really welcome. You're welcome. That. You know what I mean? It's, uh, awesome. it's fun. It's, it's important, you know, it's cause it's like, I'm the young guy coming up and I gotta pay my respect to, you oh. know, forgotten weapons, of course. So it is very important to me that that respect is showed. So I want to do that first off. All right, cheesy segment over. Now, we were originally coming out here, sir, to do your, a video on your F&D. Yes. But we had some issue with SMB. Yeah, SMB, F&D, not good. Not good. It did not work out well. Um, we started to film it with the F&D, and then, it, you know, I had some plans to film some stuff with the H car, with Ian, but um, now it's just only H car. So yep. sadly, SMB did not work out well with the F&D. But we can still look at this. Exactly. Which is a really interesting side note to the H car. Yes. Because they're both BARs. Yes. But they're very different guns. Um, I believe you also got an H car that you're working yes. on a yep. video. Okay. What is what's been your experience with the H car? So far, pretty good. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Uh, mine's the 20 inch instead of 16. Why'd you go with the 20 inch? Uh, I wanted more barrel length for more velocity. Okay. Because I like the idea of running AP through it. Well, oh, and yes. AP okay. is the more barrel you've got, the more velocity, yeah. the better that stuff works. Are you running it more still in the traditional, like heavy counter assault rifle roll? Are you going more of like a designated marksman type thought process with it? I'm thinking it's the SIG XM7 we have at home. You know, that's, that's a weird thought I ran with, but the only thing is, of course, 30 6 ammo being outdated. What? Well,. I, like compared to what That's the modern idea. Well, I, I would say in comparison to what the modern Sig Spear or the or the that ammo would be, right? Okay, that's true. Compared to six eight by fifty one. Yeah. Yeah, thirty out six. Outdated is an interesting phrase, maybe, but it's definitely less efficient. Here's a question for you: You being the the gun orientated mind that you have, do you think that a more modernized version of thirty out six could ever exist? Sure, it's the three oh eight. 
Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, that is literally the modernized. The, it is. It is the modernized version. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's. You got me there. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I asked that is because you have this big 30 odd six cartridge, and it's it's a big round compared mm -hmm. to you know 308. Yeah, but it's still the six, same bullet, of course. It's 762 by 63. Yeah. Think about that. It's literally half an inch longer than 308. Right, and it's still this anti compared to 308. You're still losing, like, what, for what you lose and what you gain, it's very marginal for, like, the robust size. Dealing with the larger mags, dealing with different gear that you now have to worry about compared to, say, the infrastructure of the 308 mags and all the supporting equipment. If you're talking about the idea of, like, should you use 30 out 6 in a tactical application today, right? Which is to say exactly how you've kitted that rifle out. The answer is no, that would be dumb. It would. <laughs> it, it would be dumb, but I will say that this thing has a certain sex appeal about it, and I always talk about it in my videos that I love. Um, if it was the end of the world and I was fighting off, you know, the last of the zombies or I had to worry about like a horde of bears, for whatever reason, I love the idea of having a 30 6 battle rifle. Is it practical like you're saying? I mean, no, it works. It works. But it's there are things that can do the same job better with less weight. I yeah. think it's a really cool, fun gun. Absolutely. Which oh, is yeah. a distinct thing from, is it a practical modern military fire? Right, right. I think I, I talked about this earlier in the video that we didn't really see the H car in video games. So it never really came to like this big pop culture icon status. The only thing it had I, off the top of my head is Battlefield Hardline. I don't know if you ever played that. Essentially, it's cops and robbers. I'm an old man, apparently. You are an old man, sir. <laughs> you are aged and seasoned properly. I, that's pretty much it. And that's like a weird thing you look at because, you know, me being the young guy, firearms culture, that pipeline was, of course, video games and then get into airsoft and then real, real guns. So it, it, to me, it's important. You know what I mean? And this never got its heyday on the screen in that aspect. You know what else didn't? Poor F and D here. Yeah, you know what's crazy? That is the best BAR, it, and it's never been in. As far as I know, it maybe it's in something like Enlisted, but it's I, never been in yeah. one of the AAA big franchises. No, no, even like in Battlefield Five. This, from what you were showing me, this thing is fantastic compared to the other BARs I've seen. It's very wieldy. It's very practical. I got that quick change barrel, uh, a mag release that makes sense. It is very well rounded. Disassembly? The disassembly. Now, one thing that I did not like about the H car that I do love about the F and D is for cleaning purposes, the disassembly process. This was kind of a nightmare uh, to field strip it out and about, like at the flat range. But from what you were showing okay. me with the F and D, I would love to see you field strip it real quick, essentially, for, sure. for cleaning purposes. So the difference here is that this is derived from the US model 1918 BAR. Mm -hmm. which never, it, it turned into like a side tangent of development. Yeah. What FN did with the BAR themselves is they kept actually iterating on it and making it a better and better gun, which included things like giving it a tip down buttstock. So disassembly on this guy, I probably should have dropped the bolt first, but it takes care of itself. Uh, grip frame comes out and then I've got one pin on the top, buttstock pivots down and all the internals just pull straight out the back. On the H car, because of its ancestry to the 1918s, everything has to come out the bottom of the receiver because the buttstock doesn't pivot like this, and it's a huge pain. This, incidentally, is the same system they would go on to use in the FN Mag, mm -hmm. which is basically the BAR goes on to be developed into the FN Mag. This thing is so much better yeah. than the 1918s. It's got a quick change barrel on it. It's got an actual pistol grip on it. It just makes sense. Yeah, I think they're fun. You ever use it with the laser? Um, yeah, we did some night vision shooting with it, but I didn't get too crazy with the laser under night vision yet. I, of course, couldn't resist trying to run it like a tactical modern firearm. I just, uh, it's just the problem I have with my existence. Um, You're just so used to ARs that you can't do anything different. I know, that's a good point, yeah. And of course, running a 30 6 battle rifle compared to an AR is like... It's the problem with the kids these days. <laughs> Thanks again for coming out, sir. I greatly appreciate it. It's a great honor, and uh, yeah, we bet. have a rest of this video to carry on. So. Yeah, sorry we couldn't get more time on the FND. It's okay. I blame SMB. So do I. Now, an upside to the gun is also a downside to the gun. So here is my Rhodesian-inspired FAL, right? This is a 762x51 battle rifle. And then here we have the H car mag with its 30 6 But this is the difference, right? You can, you can see that the 30 6 is still a lot bigger than that 7.62x51. So pretty much by the turn of the century in the 1950s after World War II, America being the powerhouse superpower that it was, told everyone else in the world, like all of its NATO allies, hey, we're gonna be running the 
760 by 51 round because they modernized that 30 cal round. They made it a bit more efficient, smaller mags all around the board. They wanted that universal weapon platform with the N14 and the world followed suit. So the 30-06 kind of went the way of the Dodo pretty much after Korea, I would say. Minus, of course, unique uses by M1 Grands in Korea and stuff like that. So, But that 762 round is now, or that 762 by 51 round is of course way more affordable. And the mags are just way smaller. You can see the biggest bane of the existence with the H car is going to be acquiring gear that comes into place and works well with it because yet again it goes back to the gun having this infrastructure that isn't there to support it there's just not a lot of gear companies for it there's just not a lot of gear itself for it this chest rig was custom made by hub city outdoors to be able to support the bar mags and it does a good job at it it's nice and comfy it wears well it can support extra ammo because well carrying around a bar uh, it's heavy the ammo for it is also heavy so you want to carry as much of it as you can comfortably right because ammo does win those gunfights at least from what Garantham says. I wanted to do a real quick glance at the gun and essentially what I like and don't like. And one of the big things I don't like is the charging handle, but it is an iconic feature of the BAR. I wish they did something slightly different, maybe more akin to how this FAL has its charging handle to where it doesn't fold up and down at all because when you're running kit, with this particular firearm, uh, this has a, a, a tendency that it'll get snagged on whatever you're running, it'll lock back, it'll poke you. Is it a huge deal? No, until it is, I guess. So there is that factor. And then of course, I had the issue with the trigger housing because I got this directly from Ohio Ordnance and I didn't, let it, I didn't loan it out to anyone else. I didn't let anyone else work on it and I had that trigger issue. So there was that. And then essentially what else I don't like is going to be the height of the uh, Picatinny on top of the gun. I know Grantham mentioned it, and to me, it's it's kind of high up there. Uh, it's not a big, big deal for mounting optics, and it kind of works out nicely when you're running a helmet with night vision, from what I've found, and for, at least for the red dot. But mounting magnified optics, or say an LPVO, it's going to look goofy, and I, I don't love it, but that's pretty much it. As far as, like, say, uh, devices that work with night vision, I, I went with just the thumb activation method, and then I have the IR head and then a white light head. I love the Mod Light IR head. It's like very powerful IR light, so why not use it? I did run the gun suppressed for a bit. Um, I had some issues arise running it suppressed, but that was with the Springfield ammunition, so I think more modern caliber 30-06 will be just fine. So, yet again, going back to my personal experience, me being a dude on the internet that wears a ball of clava, so take everything I do and say with a grain of salt. Now, ultimately, I do... If in the grand scheme of things, I feel very lucky to have obtained this gun, especially when it was cheaper. I feel very blessed in that sense, and it's kind of like a sign of the YouTube career, how well it went. Uh, because I never imagined myself owning this firearm just due to how expensive it was. Uh, and so it was a real treat and kind of a, a blessing in that aspect. So it's not lost on me. Would I encourage you to acquire one? I don't know, man. This, the, How much they cost, the infrastructure, if you have the disposable income or if you have the financial means to do so, then I'd say I can't stop you, of course. But if you are someone who is balling on a budget, if you are genuinely concerned about finances, then by all means, no. Of course I'm not gonna recommend you to go even further into debt for something like this because there are more practical options out there for self-defense, guys, come on. This, of course, is freaking cool, guys. This, of course, is freaking cool, and I do like it very much. Uh, you know, a funny thing pop culture-wise, these guns haven't caught on too hard pop culture. The only video game I can think of is Battlefield Hardline, and even that game wasn't that popular. But it was cool that it got featured in Hardline. I wish to see this gun more in video games. I think that would be very cool, and I think it does have a, a good look to it. It's a modern, outdated gun, I should say, for what it is, but it still is very cool because I, I will say it does have the X factor. We're getting into that. What is the X factor, right? What made Roman legionaries legionaries? What made a knight a knight? There is this X factor. What makes an American rifleman an American rifleman, right? There is this unquantifiable secret sauce that goes into it. And I think to us as Americans, 30-06 is an all-American round. It has ass behind it. It is powerful. It is big. It is robust. You know, is it as good as modern calibers today? Eh, probably not. But there is something to be said about running and gunning a 30-06 battle rifle. This is this is a little bit bigger than your regular battle rifle, right? Because here we have got your got my FAL, which of course is a little bit longer than the 16-inch H car, but this thing still goes freaking hard. And running an H car like this, it is just darn right freaking cool. 
Of course, it has its downsides, like I mentioned. So, you know, take away with your own thoughts, formulate your own opinions, because I have my opinion on this thing. I think it's really cool, but there are a lot of things I don't like about it. Mainly, I don't like how much it costs, the logistics behind it, how it's not more widely available. It is a very boutique gun, but that also makes it kind of cool and sought after. So it's freaking sick. Gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if you are sticking around, go watch another video. It should pop up right around here. It's, it's purpose-driven, designed for you to watch. So you can go ahead and do that. If you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon, X, and way to support the channel, as well as merchandise. As always, gentlemen, stay easy, stay breezy. I'll catch you on the flip. Covering fire!